Uh, it's basically a, a function calling itself until it meets a certain condition and then it, it, it exits and produces the final result. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So a function calls itself over and over again until a certain condition is met. And there's a term we use to refer to that condition. What is it? Base condition? Yeah, base condition or base case. It's, <laughs> so every recursive function without exception needs a base case. Otherwise, you risk running in an internal loop, and that's a big problem, as you can prob as you probably know. Uh, my dad used to tell me a story from his college days where he wasn't a computer guy, but he knew the computer people. And this was back in the days when all the computers ran on punch cards. So as a prank, he would he knew enough about punch card programming to program in an internal loop, and he would just set that up on the computers, and you couldn't like hit Control C or anything like that to break out of it. So don't be that guy, essentially. <laughs> Uh, so I believe, so one of the challenges was to uh, redo factorial palindrome 99 bottles in Roman numerals uh, as re with recursive solutions. And I believe Tom did factorial with everybody yesterday. So I'm going to start by working on palindrome and then maybe, nine, maybe either 99 bottles or Roman numerals as well. After that, we've got time. I'll share my screen. All right, so I'm gonna start with palindromes. So let me fork it down. All right, so what would people find more useful here, covering this in JavaScript or Python? JavaScript for me. JavaScript, please. Okay, JavaScript it is. All right, so looking at the palindrome problem, I'm gonna read over the readme just to make sure we, I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing here. So a palindrome is a word, phrase, or number, or other sequence of characters which reads the same backward or forward, such as madam or kayak. So we're going to create a program that can detect if a word is a palindrome. So our method should take in a word as a parameter and determine if the word is a palindrome. In both scenarios, true or false, it should respond accordingly. Your palindrome should be able to handle both integers and strings. So we have the uh, testing code. And then we have a challenge here. Allow your palindrome checker to check against palindromic sentences such as sore was I, air I saw Eros, and a man, a plan, a canal, Panama. So let's start out with the regular version before we go to get to the challenge version. So just for now, I'm going to just focus on the code right now because I feel uh, I, obviously I would want to have spec files for my code, but in this case, I just want to make sure I can get it done in the interest of having a good lecture here. So thinking about pseudocode, knowing we wanted to handle this as a palindromic, a palindromic, sorry, not palindromic, recursive solution. So let's figure out our pseudocode. So step one, define function palindrome that takes word as a parameter. I'm also going to There we go. All right, so what's, so thing, knowing that we want to do this recursively, first we need to figure out what is our base case? How do we know that we have reached an answer, yes or no, whether or not we have a palindrome? Kind of depends how you do it. I think um, how we do it, how we did it, we, slowly whittled the array down to one uh, element less. So our base case was if the um, array was equal to one and that meant it was a palindrome and then you return true. Mm -hmm. So when you say slowly whittle the word down, could you elaborate a bit on, bit, bit on that? Yeah, um, so if the, the um, how should I say, the first element and the last element were equal to each other, you would um, mm -hmm. shift and pop, um, use those array methods to remove those elements. 
and then that would make it um, two elements shorter from the outside. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, so we compare the first character and the last character of our word, and if they're equal, we run the function again with a version without those two characters, and we keep comparing. So in this right. case, we actually have two base cases. One, like you said, is if we get the length of the word down to one or less, that means we have a palindrome. Uh, what's the other base case that could end this loop? If you start out with just a single character, maybe? Uh, possibly, but that's, again, I would call that an edge case. But remember, this is a function that returns a Boolean. So that's what happens if we do have a palindrome. How do we know we don't have a palindrome? If the two sides of the array aren't equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the first character and last character at any point in this process don't equal one another, then that means that it's not a palindrome. Any mis a single mismatch means it's not a palindrome and we can just return false. So let's write this out in pseudocode. So compare first and last character. Well, let's do this in coding terms. If first character equals last character, run palindrome with word minus first and last character. Else, we want to return false. And then we want to say, and then every time we do this, we also want to say, if length of word. So someone said if it equals one, but I think there may be situations where it could be zero as well, right? It depends on how many uh, characters are in it. If it's an even number, we should get down to the last time we run it, it should get to zero characters long. It should just be an empty string. But if it's an odd number, then we would get down to one. So you'd say if length of word is less than or equal to one. Which well, I think it, would, it wouldn't hit one because if there's two left, it would compare those last two. And if they were... Um, there's three left, you would get one, right? Yeah, if there's three characters left, then you would end up with one. If there are two characters left, we would remove both of them and end up with zero. Right. Oh, there was also another requirement that said we need to make sure this works with integers as well. So before we do anything else, maybe we need to say, you know, convert word into string. All right. Does that look good to everybody? All right. I'm going to assume it does. So first off, let's convert the word into string. So we could say, let string equal word dot, would it be to string? What's the string? How do you turn a variable into a string in JavaScript? You can always look it up. JavaScript to string. to string. Yep. So equals word dot to string. That way we always make sure that even if we pass this numbers, it'll still work. All right, so that's our first step down. If first character equals last character. So we could say if, so we know that the first, so the first character is zero. How do we detect the last character again? So minus one. Yep. No, I had a question about um, the previous line. Because yep. you only really want to do that one time. Should the recursive function be a separate function? I'm sorry, I'm a little sh I'm not sure what you mean. Should the recursive function be a separate function? Because if this is the recursive function, you're converting a string constant. Like every recursion is converting to a string. You you only really need to do it one time. So isn't that kind of a waste? Uh, you could throw a flag in there as part of your parameter, set it as a default of true the very first time, and then every time you call it, you pass in a false. Yeah. So that way, if it's uh, notified to skip that step. Okay. Yeah, I could also say like if 
I could check if word is a string and if it is, convert it. Okay. So uh, that is, so I guess this would be slightly wasteful, but in the big picture of things, it's not going to cause that much of an issue. But that's a good, a good thing to think about. All right, so, all right, so, it, so anyway, I have this case. If the first character equals to the last character, that means that so far it's palindromic. So that means we need to pass in our function with the word minus the first and last character. So I'd write, and whenever you're doing a recursive function, you don't just call the function, you return the function. So I'd say return palindrome, and then what am I passing into it as a parameter exactly? How do I narrow this thing down? Me and par my partner used um, slice. Mm -hmm. So be string dot slice. Yep. And then what does slice take as arguments? Um, it's the start and end, mm -hmm. non-inclusive. So I think we used uh, one and then minus one. Yep. Yeah, so slice, and if we want a uh, slice, gives returns a portion of the a substring of the string. And the first argument is where it starts, which is inclusive. And the last argument is where it ends, where it's exclusive. And the cool thing about having that negative one there is that we don't have to know what the length of the string is. It'll just say, give me everything but the last one. All right, so that's our step right here. If first character was last character, we return the palindrome with word minus first and last character. That means else, meaning it is not, we have a mismatch, we just return false. So that's one of our base cases down. If it's not a match, we return false. And then we need one more thing. We need our other base case, which is if the length of the word is less than or equal to one, we return true. So you can say if string.length less than or equal to one, return true. How's that look to everybody? Does that um, need to be the first if check? Uh, it might be. Why do you say so? Because uh, I think if if the string is empty, I mean, yeah, if the string is empty, then string zero would be null, and then string minus one would be null, and that would still check out. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Very good. So remember what I think I mentioned before class started that control flow is a very is essential to running a recursive function. The order of things matters. So if I have this if string.length is less than or equal to one down here, it'll, it may hit this part and then put us in an internal loop without us realizing it. Um, Noah, on line, uh, oh, we moved it, one second. Uh, line 12, mm -hmm. I, if you do string minus one in the brackets, isn't that gonna be undef undefined? <clears throat> uh, in general or? In JavaScript. Let's try it. So I could do something, you know, I can set up node. I could say string equals string. So if I do string zero, I should get S. Or do string negative one. Ah, you're right. So we have to do like um, string dot length minus one. <laughs> you can. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I thought you could use negative uh, numbers for references in slice. Well, we can also test that out in our shell it, right yeah, here. Yeah, and in the slice. Yeah, it, slice. JavaScript's a little inconsistent is it, with some methods. Yeah, there you go. You can use it mm -hmm. negative references, but but not always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just read that one because I wanted to make sure that it was. Um, it says the that it says the second it's argument. JavaScript. It says the second argument is um, the end index, and basically what the slice method does is it sub if you put a negative number, it it takes a, uh, the array or whatever it is dot mm -hmm. length, and then and then appends that number to it. So if it's negative one, it would be array dot length yep. minus one. Interesting. Yeah, and it doesn't look like there's any kind of method that just says give me the last character. 
There's so many things in JavaScript that if they just programmed in it, it would make it a lot easier, but mm -hmm. they don't. So let's say string dot length minus one here. All right. So I'm going to say module dot exports equals palindrome. And we have our very kind of basic palindrome driver things here. So let's try this out. So I'm just going to do, you know, just regular JavaScript. So cdjs. All right, let's see what happened here. All right, so we have console log pal palindrome. Pal dot palindrome is not a function. Oh, okay, I did my requirements wrong, it looks like. I think I'd have to do Let's see if that fixes it. There we go. So we got some trues and we got some falses here. So what am I missing to, so it looks like the first one worked, race car evaluated to true like it should. Uh, Newton didn't, so what went wrong here? Uppercase. Yep. So we need to account for, there may be uppercase letters in there and it should be evaluated no matter what. So we can fix that out, we can say. To lower. Dot to lower. Nope. Did I do that wrong? Is it dot to lower case? I think so. Let's just look that up before I just uh, mess my Capital C, I think. All right, we can try that. All right. Cool. So we got true, 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 except for the last two, which is should be true if we're trying the extra portion of the challenge. Uh, how many people did the extra portion of the challenge? In the last challenge run, but not this one. Yeah, uh, well, we did it with the, um, oh, not in the recursion, but it shouldn't be uh, too difficult to set up uh, in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You just have to remove out the, um, spaces um, mm -hmm. you could either use regex or you know, just do if statement you know if it's not an alphanumeric don't include it up in your initial conversion up in line uh, three and four area mm -hmm. yeah so in order for these sores i or sires and a mana plan of canal panama in order for them to be read as palindromes we need to get rid of every non-alphanumeric character which means get rid of all of the spaces and punctuation marks. All right, so there's many different ways to do that. We could use regex, which is kind of relevant to what we're doing today. Let's see what JavaScript has to offer in terms of that. So if I want to say JavaScript remove characters from string, let's see what comes up. There's probably something that will do that for us. There's something called the replace method. Let's take a look at that. So return a string where Microsoft places W3 schools. So the, re the replace method searches a string for a specified value or a regular expression and returns a new string where the specified values are replaced. So in this case, we may want to say, if we can give a pattern for anything that is not a letter or a number, we can just replace it with an empty string. So I could do string equals string dot replace. And then the first thing is what we want to replace. So we need to say any alpha, non alpha numeric character, which means we're going to have to use regex here. So I know we're, this is getting a little ahead of ourselves a bit, but we, so let's see if we can get the regex pattern for any non alpha numeric character. Does anyone know off the top of their heads what that would be? Carrot A through Z. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't quite, could I catch that? Carrot A through Z. Carrot A through Z. Cool. Isn't the carrot the negation? Mm -hmm. but we can test that out. So I do. It only works for English, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. We're not going to check every language this time. 
So let's take a look at how regex works just a bit. So a regular expression, we define it as between these two uh, slashes right here. So we need this, so we put slash slash, it thinks it's a comment right now until we put something between them. So let's take a look, look see, they have some special characters here, character classes. There's actually a really good reference that I'm gonna show you right now because it's a lot easier to use than just going through this called Rubular. And Rubular is technically uh, a Ruby regex expression, but most of the most of the characters are identical to JavaScript and Python, and they have a quick reference down here. And then you can also test things up here, which is really nice. So they have things like any non-word character. So backslash w, any non-word character. So if I put a test string right here, like sore was I, air, I saw eros, and then just put backslash w, see it matched all of the spaces and periods. So in this case, I want to tell it, replace any non-word character with an empty string. Do you need a G after that? After the forward slash? Let's take a look at the string dot replace thing and see what that says. So replace method searches string for specified value and returns new string where the specified values are replaced. So by the phrasing there, I'm going to assume that it's uh, that replace is a global method, but let's test it out and see if it works. Uh oh, I got falses for both of them. All right, so in that case, we need to figure out what's going on here. So if I do console.log string, and I'm going to comment out all these other tests because I don't want to have too many things console logged. I'm just going to console log everyone except Soros I or so Eros. Ah, yep, it looks like it only took, took out the first one. So I was wrong about that. Ah, but here it is. So replace all occurrences of a specified value, use the global G modifier. So if we want to figure out how to do that, I think they have an example down here. Yep, so in order to make it global, you put a G after that, you are right. So just putting that there says, give me everything, not just the first one. There we go. It also gives us a nice little thing of how our, how our pro thing is working. So here is our all lowercase version of the, uh, of the phrase with all of the non letters taken out, narrowed down, narrowed down, narrowed down until it gets to just one character, which we mean, which mean, means that we know it turns, it's a palindrome. So I'm gonna take out the console.log here and uncomment everything over here. So just to make sure once and for all, we've passed all of our tests. There we go. Looks like it all worked. What does, question? Yes? Sorry, does anybody know? So any non-work character, do we have any context for that in JavaScript? Is that based off of the language set, right? Will that work for non-English? And does it depend on what the client is running? Good question. I'm not entirely sure. I, yeah, I would have to, you know, double, double check that. I'm willing to assume that when it says alphanumeric characters, it's able to detect characters that like are kind of non-standard in English, but that would be something to experiment with. I'll do, I'll do a bit of Googling and get back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what other questions do people have about uh, recursion and the palindrome function in, in particular. Nothing? So 
So quick question for everybody. So now we've solved palindrome two different ways. We've solved it recursively and the, what we think of as the normal way iteratively. Which one do you think is a better way of solving this? The normal way? <laughs> <laughs> iteratively, yeah, and how come? <laughs> I don't know about everybody else, but recursive is hard for me to think about. Yep, recursion is definitely difficult to visualize. I suffer from that too sometimes. And going, it took me a long time to kind of understand what was happening whenever I ran a recursive function. And in terms of efficiency as well, iterative solutions almost always overtake recursive solutions when it comes to speed. Uh, in general, once you're out in the world, you know, making your own projects, there are very, very few times you're actually going to have to implement a recursive solution. Like the only situation I can think of where a recursive solution makes more sense is like if you're making a video game that involves like an enemy's pathfinding algorithm. But anything else, you'll want an iterative solution. The reason we cover recursion is even though it's kind of rare, it does come up. And it's also a very common thing to encounter in coding interviews. Uh, during whiteboarding challenges, you'll often be challenged to implement a recursive solution to a problem. And show, demonstrating that you have an understanding of recursion and how it works is vital to getting a job as a developer. With that, I am going to do one more of the challenges. We could do either 99 bottles or Roman numerals. Does anyone have a preference? 99 bottles. Okay, let's do 99 bottles. So let me find it real quick. And we know how 99 bottles works. I can just make one. So I'm just gonna say make directory. And let's do this one in Python. All right, so let's make a method called bottle song that takes num as an argument for number of bottles. All right, so thinking about how to solve this, what's our base case? When num equals zero? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Couldn't you also say num equals two? We could also do num equals two because it depends on if we want to hard code in the last couple lines uh, so we can get that bottles bottle. So we do, you know, doing our pseudocode, define bottle song that takes number as an argument. And Let's make this a little more, because it's pretty easy to just essentially set up a loop that run that prints everything. Well, yeah, I get, hmm, let me think about that for a sec, because we can just have everything print every, every recursive thing, but generally with a recursive function, you want it to return something. So how about we just kind of give a little extra challenge to ourselves and say, all right, what we want this to do is we want it to build the string. And then once the string is complete, then we print out the entire song as one statement. Just a little bit of an extra, extra challenge for ourselves. So we can say if number is greater than Let's say greater than one for now. Return bottle song number minus one. In order to kind of build a string out of all of this, we may want to define an empty string. So we could say 
string equals empty string. And then we'll say, then one, we return string plus return plus bottle song number minus one. Or actually, sorry, I'm a little conf I'm confusing myself a bit here now. Recursion is definitely a mind bender no matter how you're doing this. So if my logic is starting to seem off, please let me know because I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here just a bit. That's the same thing me and Chris did yesterday because he was thinking about doing one big string at the end. We were in circles trying to figure it out. And then finally I settled on, let's just do each case and print it out. And then, uh, so you had to rewrite it a couple times, but you also had it grammatically correct. But I did run into a problem at the end, and I'll ask it once we get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we want to make sure that every time we build the string, it returns that. So we'd say, all right, I think, so first, we also want to say, before we do that, we still want to do string, you know, something like add number, bottles of beer on the wall, et cetera. And then we have an else down here that says else just return string. or actually else just print string. All right, let's see if this works. If not, I can just do it the old fashioned way and that'll work fine too. So we can say string equals empty string. We can say string plus equals num and then we can have a, you know, do something in here that it, like uh, that'll say whether or not it's bottle or bottles, right? So we want to do a one line. Uh, what's the word? There's a word for this, and I'm completely blanking on it. Ternary. Ternary, right? So how would we put this in a ternary? Um, I think it's like number question mark. Oh, I mean, excuse me, uh, number less than one or something like that. Mm -hmm. Question mark. Yeah, number greater than one. Oh, possibly. It's, it's, you uh, can do it either way. You like S colon oh, bottles colon bottle. Yeah, we could just do it like this. That's the JavaScript. Oh, you're right. Oh. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even see that we're doing Python. Yeah, uh, it's uh, variable equals this if that mm -hmm. else. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yep. So that would be. So this would be bottles if num is greater than one, else, oops, else bottle. Technically you want bottle if num equals one because zero is also plural, zero bottles. Yep, we could do that as well. Double equals. Oh, thank you. Beer. Let's do this on another line, because why not? We can add a new line character. T 
take one down, pass it around. Now minus one, bottles of beer on the wall. All right, so then we update our string. And then we want to check what the number is. So we can say if num is greater than one. So we have at least, yep. Then we should say return string plus bottle song num. And without thinking of the last line right now, I'm just going to say else print string. So let's test this out. We're definitely going to have to change this. I'm just going to use 10 for now, just as a base case. Don't want to do 99 just yet. OK, we have a problem. We ha OK, we had a uh, maximum recursion depth exceeded while getting the string of an object. OK, what did I do wrong here? Does anyone see the issue? <laughs> You need to subtract one from num. Yep. I was just saying, okay, if number is greater than one, do this, but then I never changed the number. It's a good thing that this editor has a built-in thing that catches it. Otherwise, we would get a stack overflow and I could fuck up my computer. All right. All right, we've got another thing going on here. All right, so we got one bottle of beer on the wall. I also need, realize I need to do the ternary thing here as well, but that's another issue. Then we say, can only concatenate string, not none type to string. So what did I do here? Does anyone see what went wrong when I wrong that it tried to concatenate a none type to my string? What happens when you end a function with just a print statement? Oh, it's return none. Mm -hmm. So I, need to, I do need to return string. And instead, I'm going to print out the bottle song. All right. So all right, it looks like we still need to Looks like my new line character didn't. Uh, all right, well, I need to do a new line character every uh, a few different places. So I need to change my formatting a bit. But by the looks of it, it looks like the logic is more or less sound. So I'm just going to add a few things here. going to add a new line character there. I'm going to copy this ternary logic. Put that here. We have 10 bottles of beer on the wall, 10 bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, nine bottles of beer on the wall. All right, so our last challenge then is we need that last part, or we need the original number to get back to, go to the store, buy some, buy some more, back to the original number. So You can do a count at the top and then just um, update it every time you go down and then just return that for your bottom number, that way you don't have to mess with anything else. Uh, do a count at the top. So I'm not, uh, could you like uh, us? As part of one of your arguments for when you come in, you can also put in a count instead of equal to zero. And then as you're going through, just update that. And then at the bottom, just return that and add one to it. Mm -hmm. So as an optional argument, you mean? Yeah, we could do that. So we could do something like count equals zero. So we have an optional right. parameter. And then every time we run this, we would say count plus one. All right, yeah, that could work. So, and I could do something I have right here that says print count before we return the string, just to make sure it comes out as to the original number. Look up here. 
ah, looks like count is going to nine when we want it to be 10. So maybe we should want it to start at one. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that's one way of making sure that our original number uh, gets there. But I'm also curious about one more thing before we, let's see, when we reach this base case, what is num equal? I'm curious. It should probably be zero, right? Or one. Yep. So it looks like count seems like a great way to do that. So in that case, before we do anything else, we want to say string plus equals zero bottles of beer on the wall, zero bottles of beer, go to the store, make sure I put a new line. Go to the store, buy some more, count bottles of beer on the wall. So I try this one more time. Nope, let me put another new line character in front of that. There we go, so now we have 10 bottles of beer on the wall, nine, seven, six, seven, eight, one. Take one down, pass around, zero bottles of beer on the wall. Then we have zero bottles of beer on the wall, zero bottles of beer, go to the store, buy some more. I guess there's supposed to be no more bottles of beer on the wall, but I'm not really <laughs> worried about that too much. All right, so it looks like we have a solution here. Does anyone have any questions about how we implemented this? Is all making sense? All right, in that case, let's take a, take a six minute break. So be back here at 922 and then we'll go over uh, binary search.